In this video, we will be taking a look at an interesting effect in which Mercury gives off light, and making a device to demonstrate that effect. Late one 1676 night, Jean Picard was transporting a mercury-filled barometer. In early times, barometers were just a long tube, which an open end, with mercury in it. The mercury would move back and forth as the pressure changed, and showed the millimeters of mercury or inches of mercury, the barometric pressure. And with that, you can calculate a whole bunch of weather systems and whether a storm's coming in, high pressure, low pressure. It was a very useful tool. Now, Jean Picard was transporting his mercury-filled barometer to a different location late one night. So it was dark out, and he noticed as he was walking, it glowed at where the mercury met the glass at the top. Now, a barometer has a vacuum at the top which then changes distance as the pressure changes outside. And at where this vacuum was, the mercury was moving back and forth and rubbing on the glass, which he noticed this bright glow. And that's why the mercury effect is called barometric light. Instead of having a big old barometer, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a small tube with mercury in an evacuated environment with a rarefied gas to produce the same effect in a small desktop toy. In a previous video, I showed how to make ampules, so I'll just be touching on it briefly. Begin with a length of tubing. This one already had a tip on it from a previous project, so that's just quickly removed. The glass is then removed a little bit more and heated up until a nice bulb is formed in the end. We're going to set that off to cool. Once cooled, we can start again. We're going to measure out a 3 inch distance for the size of the tube. Now remember, when you're making a pull on a tube, it's going to shrink. So if you take it and measure exactly on 3 inches, you'll get a tube longer than 3 inches. So heat up a little farther back than the total distance you want. Once that's heated, we can then pull and create our neck. Set that off to the side once again to cool. Once cooled, we can start again for the final step, which is to cut and flame polish. I have this little cutting tool, which makes a nice little impression in it just like a file would, adding a little bit of water will then be able to use a piece of glass melted and touching into that will cause it to crack. We can then break it off quite easily. Next is to flame polish it to get rid of the sharp edges so it doesn't cut into the tube of the vacuum pump. Now 
I can see that there's a crack forming around it, so I'm going to continue heating until that crack went all the way around and break off that piece and just reflame melt the bottom part where it has cracked. Next, mercury is filled into it. Make sure safety handling is followed when playing around with mercury. Once that's done, we're moving over to the vacuum pump. This is a two-stage vacuum pump. The pressure doesn't have to be absolute, very, very low. It can be done with minor pressures. The tube is then hooked up, and when brought near a Tesla coil, once the pressure is dropped low enough, you get a mercury discharge tube. This is what we want. Next, let's seal it. Now, sealing a pressure vessel like this, even though it's negative pressure, safety must be held up because this could implode, sending glass everywhere. The method that I use for sealing this is slowly heating it up and having the vacuum pull the glass inwards until it forms a solid seal, and then moving it down the neck towards the vacuum pump. If you move it towards the ampule, you'll get an implosion and it won't look good for the final product, so move it towards the tube of the vacuum pump. The final step is just a little bit of glass cleanup so you get a nice rounded edge that's not too long of a tail. And there we have it, we have the completed barometric light test tube. Another name that this tube goes by is a triboelectric tube. Now let's test it with the Tesla coil once again, and we see that it stays the nice glow. Now let's turn off the lights and see if we can see some barometric light. When moving the test tube back and forth, we can see a nice glow coming from it. The camera doesn't pick it up as well as it does in person. The barometric light effect happens due to stick-slip friction between the glass and the mercury. Glass is wetted by mercury and slides over it, but the slide isn't perfectly sliding. There's microchasms between the interactions where it's rubbing. This rubbing causes electrons to go from the mercury to the glass. Then as it moves, the electrons go back to the mercury and they hit the gas inside of the tube, which then caused the glow to happen. This is the same thing that happens in gas discharge tubes, where the electrons strike the glass, which then excite it, which then cause it to glow. Now shape affects the way that the light is emitted. Here I have a bulb-shaped barometric light tube that I made, which has a bulb on the end of it. I'll be showing how to make bulbs in another video. It's the same concept of sealing so just refer back to this one when, you, when I release that bulb video. By spinning the tube, instead of having to move it back and forth, a longer sustained light can be seen, 
which is nice and bright. I prefer this shape over the test tube as you don't run the risk of when the mercury sloshes back and forth of shattering the tube due to the mercury falling so fast. My first tube that I made of this, I moved it around a little too fast and it cracked the tube, which then led to loss of pressure, which then negated the whole tube's purpose because it let in too much air, which then leads to it not glowing anymore. I also made a rounded one, but instead of keeping it round, I flattened out the bottom before sealing so that it can sit upright on your desk. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time. If you liked the video, please drop a like. If you like my content, please consider subscribing. If you want to join a community of like-minded individuals to discuss science, please check out my Discord server. All the links to my social medias and the Discord server are in the description below. If you're interested, here is now a video on how I make the bulbs.